Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. A few months ago, I did a video sharing how different uh, cardstocks in my craft room foiled. So in this video, I'm going to use two of those pieces that I used in that video, and I'll link that video at the end. The first piece I'm going to use is the alcohol ink cardstock. Now, if you've never used the alcohol ink cardstock before, it doesn't necessarily just need to be used with alcohol ink. It's a gorgeous black cardstock that has a velvety, uh, suede finish to it. And as you can see from this video, it foils beautifully. There's a tiny little bit of overfoiling, but that's easily removed with um, a brush. And it's not necessarily overfoiling. It's just that the foil came off while I was pulling the foil off of the paper. So it's not actually stuck to the paper. And like I said, a stiff brush is easily used to remove that from your image there. So I'll put that to the side. My second piece that I foiled is some Bristol cardstock. Now this is something that I've had in my room for, or my craft room for years. Um, don't even remember what I bought it for, but apparently I thought I was gonna use a lot of it because I bought two pads of it. So we're going to foil that here. If you've never foiled before, you can check out that first video where I am foiling different cardstocks. I go through the process. Basically you wait for your platform to completely heat up. There's a light that tells you when it's heated up enough. And then you press a timer button and it times it perfectly so that you know how long to um, foil it for before you put it through your die cutting machine for the pressure. You need both the heat and the pressure to foil. So the Bristol paper, again, there is some oil over foiling. It didn't foil perfectly. It wouldn't be my first choice for foiling, but just because it didn't foil perfectly doesn't mean we can't use it and create some cards out of it. So I've recently gotten a new set of Magicals powders, and I thought it would be nice to use it on both a dark background as well as a light background. These powders have almost an interference look to them, and this is my first time using them, and I was curious to see what differences, if any, there would be in between the light cardstock and the dark cardstock. So I have a piece of chipboard here that I just have some shelf liner on it, and I'm taped my pieces down just to help with the warping. I'm using the coordinating color layer stencils that go with this Poppy's or uh, peonies set and I'm lining it up and I'm going to tape it into place just to make sure that it doesn't move on me. I've recently been doing a lot of work or playing a lot with some mica powder so I'm using one of my techniques that I use mainly with mica powders just to see how it works with the Magicals powders. I've got my stencil taped on and I'm using a Versamark pad which is a sticky ink pad and I'm inking that opening so that just in those openings for the flowers, I have some nice sticky ink for my magical powders to stick to. Now I am pressing fairly firmly because I want to make sure that that ink pad is squishing down onto the cardstock. I don't want to have it missing the cardstock. If I only press lightly, it might not do that. So you do want to press firmly. You don't want to be too, too, too firm. You don't want it to squish underneath the stencil but you do wanna make sure that you've got a decent amount of ink on there for those powders to stick to. So I've got a Perfect Pearls fluffy brush here that I'm using and I'm just dipping it into my powders and I'm dusting it onto that sticky ink. For the flowers, I'm doing pink on the outside of the petals and then purple on the inside of the petals. And Magicals powders, if you've never used them, they're kind of activated with water. So you don't see how beautiful they are until you go and put the water on top of them. I haven't tried it, but I suspect if I were to only um, ink with the Versamark and then put the powders on them and let them dry, I suspect they would rub off or smear if they weren't activated by water. Isn't that similar to Perfect Pearls? So I'm just going to fill in my entire image first, and then I'm going to lightly mist them with water. I don't necessarily want the powders to bleed all over the paper. I want it to be a little bit more concentrated on just the flowers and the leaves, but if it bleeds a little bit, that's totally fine. I do plan on die cutting these pieces, and that's what took this video so long, is I was waiting for the coordinating die to come in. So I've got my purple on here. Once I've got my powders on there, you may have seen it for the first and second color, I just use a Swiffer duster cloth to take off the excess powder, and it just cleans up the image a little bit. Now I've got my leaf stencil and I did the same thing as the flowers. I taped it in place so that it didn't shift while I was inking it. And I'm using that same Versamark pad to ink those openings and get some sticky ink in those areas of my foiled image. I'm using the green from this particular set to color in 
where those that sticky ink is and again it just sticks to that ink and you'll be able to brush it away from the other areas and then clean it off with this Swiffer duster at the end. I'm doing both the dark cardstock as well as the light cardstock with exactly the same colors so that you can see the difference between the two um, after they're activated with water and it was actually quite cool to see how they changed when they were activated by water. So you don't need to use a ton of powders on this. Anything excess that doesn't stick to your ink is really going to be brushed away anyways. So you want to make sure that you're using enough to cover that ink, but you don't want it so much that you're um, brushing away or swiffering away the, all the excess. So there's an uh, easy way to get less powder on your brush and you're going to dip it into your powder and then just tap it lightly on the side of the container and that's going to take all the excess powder off. This third stencil here is just for those center parts of those flowers. There's some little um, almost dots in there so I wanted to put that with the blue color from this set. Once I've swiffered it all down, I've got all my colors down, I'm lightly misting on that board with a distress sprayer and then I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to make some backgrounds. For those backgrounds, I'm going to use the same alcohol ink cardstock for the dark background. And then for the light background, I'm just going to use some mixed media paper. Just because I'm going to be using more water on it than I'm using for the images. So I want to make sure that I have some cardstock that can handle that water. But isn't it beautiful how those two images are using exactly the same powders, but they look completely different. So I've got half a sheet of each of the cardstocks here. I like to mist my surface as well as the back of the paper and the front of the paper when I'm doing this type of technique. And what that does is it helps to control the warping of the paper. If you're only misting one side of the paper, the paper tends to warp. And for some things you might want that look, but while it warps, the water tends to run and you have a little bit less control over where the color goes. So by missing the back of it, as well as my surface, I kind of suction it down. It keeps it lying flat without having to tape it down. I've lightly misted the front here and I'm just using a fan brush just to drop little bits of each of the colors that I used on my image piece onto my background. Once I have all of those colors down, I'm going to take some more water. I'm going to mist it some more so that colors can, those colors can start to flow and blend into each other. If I'm not getting enough movement with those colors, you can take a watercolor brush or really any brush and start to break up those colors and manually combine them with each other. The one thing you want to make sure though is you're not um, using the brush for all of the colors. You want to clean it off between colors so that you're not basically creating mud for yourself. So now that I have all of those colors on there, I am um, protecting something on my desk there and I'm just taking my distress sprayer and I'm spraying it very, very liberally with water. I wanna make sure that there's water over that entire piece of paper. And then I'm taking that water brush and I'm starting with the green. I'm kind of going in rainbow order, but I am cleaning my brush off between colors, breaking those colors up because sometimes even though you use a lot of water, you'll see the crystals from those powders. And while some of that is pretty, you don't necessarily want your whole background to be all of that. I'm also trying to make sure that that color goes to, goes to the edge of the paper, because in my mind, I'm using this for the background of the cards, and I do end up using it for the background of the cards. So I wanna make sure that those colors go all the way to the edge of the paper so that I don't have um, plain edges that I would need to cut off. I want to make sure that I can use as much of this cardstock as possible. My light color there, like I said before, I use, I'm using mixed media cardstock. You could also use watercolor paper for this, but watercolor paper tends to have a bit of a texture to it, whereas the mixed media doesn't. So there are my two dried backgrounds. And isn't it interesting how those are exactly the same colors, but they look like they're completely different sets. I love that about this. It gives it a lot more versatility. My image pieces are also completely dried, so I'm taking them off of that background that I had them drying on, and I'm going to use the matching die. I'm taping it in place, and then I'm gonna run it through my die cutting machine. For this particular technique, I could have left them completely whole and completed a card that way. They looked beautiful. It had just a touch of the colors that bled out, and it was really quite nice. But because I've done some cards that way, I wanted to make sure to use the die and to um, completely die cut it out and have a different element to the front. So I'm just laying them on my backgrounds here just to see what I like, whether that background is going to be suitable or not. And in the end, I choose to do my flower that I did on the dark paper on my light background and then the flower on the light paper on my dark background. 
that's just the best way that they kind of um, stood out a little bit and didn't really blend into that background. I'm cutting my pieces here down to four inches by five and a quarter so that when I put them on a card background, I'll see a little bit of a mat around it. Now off camera, I picked two different card bases. I ended up doing the light background on a black card base and the light or the dark background on a blue card base. With some of my excess background, I'm going to take some Pink Fresh Studio script dies and I'm going to cut just a simple sentiment. One's going to say thanks and the other one is going to say hello. I typically don't put sentiments on my cards until I send them out, just in case I want to change what they're for. But I wanted to use the, the background that create, we created in a little bit of a different way with it. And I didn't want to end up having to search for that background later. So I figured I might as well put the sentiment on there right now. So I'm putting my background as well as my image piece onto my card bases and then putting acrylic blocks on them to help them, to hold them down while I'm gluing other things in place. For my sentiments, I die cut three of the shadow and one of the script of the sentiment and I'm gluing them and layering them on top of each other. This way I don't have to use foam pop dots. For the black of the thanks, I'm using the scraps of the um, alcohol ink black cardstock from die cutting that flower out and for the light shadow, I'm using the excess scraps from die cutting that flower out. So I'm not using new paper, I'm just using scraps up which is a great way to use them up and have them not just be thrown away, basically. I took some Pink Fresh Studio iridescent jewels and put them around the outside. And I typically like to put them in place first before I glue them down, just so that I have a nice layout and I like how it looks. It's just easier to do it that way and then glue them all down at once. It does take a little bit of coordination to learn how to glue with one hand and use the jewel pick to put them in place with the other hand. The last thing I'm doing is taking a little bit of stickles and putting it in the center of the flowers for a touch of sparkle there. And there are my completed cards. The black card here, I did put a blue insert there so that someone could easily write on the inside of the card. And here's the final result with the cards. What is your favorite, the light background or the dark background with these magicals? I'm curious. Put it in the comments below. Have a great day.